You're watching Steve TV. first served or for a hundred bucks I'll put it aside for you now on the left side you'll find these black things they're little fans you can call yourself down or you can point it towards somebody else you do not like and make it nice and cold for them above that you have the complimentary white bags the complimentary white bags is where you put your lunch in there please eat the bag not on the floor and then on the right you have a fish identification chart <laughs> now the trip is going to be in two parts. First part is we're going to look to some reef. Second part is we're going to look to some fish. I'm going to put first on a DVD. Uh, a CD. <laughs> I'll put it on first a CD. And then afterwards I'm going to come back and I'll give you some more facts and figures about the beautiful reef here. All right, enjoy the experience, guys. Today we are visiting Green Island Reef. It is one of more than 2,900 individual reefs that make up the Great Barrier Reef. Fringing reefs, patch reefs, and ribbon reefs. Green Island Reef is a patch reef. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest reef structure in the world. In fact, it is visible from the moon. The only other structure on Earth that can be seen from the moon is the Great Wall of China. The Great Barrier Reef is over 2,300 kilometres long, stretching from above the northern tip of Australia down to Bundaberg in southern Queensland. For our overseas visitors, this is approximately the length of the entire Japanese island chain, or from Seattle to Los Angeles in the USA. It has a huge area of over 35 million hectares. That's the equivalent of over 70 million football fields. Although where we are today is only a very small part of the Great Barrier Reef, we will see many of the things that make the Great Barrier Reef so special, such as the high diversity of corals and fish. You might think that some of the things that you are looking at underwater are rocks, but they are not. They are hard corals. Hard corals form the basis of the reef. There are over 300 different types of hard corals. Their scientific names are very difficult to say, so we generally refer to them by what they look like. The large rock corals are called boulder or massive corals. The ones with a pattern that looks like the surface of a brain are called brain corals, while the ones with round holes all over their surface are called honeycomb corals because they look a bit like a beehive honeycomb. Mm -hmm. The branching corals that form large patches are called staghorn corals because they look like deer antlers. The flat, plate-like corals that you see are called plate corals. Table corals are bigger than plate corals and grow on a thick pedestal. They can be several meters in diameter. Staghorn and plate corals grow a lot faster than boulder corals. Some staghorn types can grow nearly 30 centimetres or a foot in a year, whereas typical boulder corals only grow about 2 millimetres or less than a quarter of an inch each year. You will notice some places on the reef with a lot of broken staghorn coral on the bottom. This is part of the natural cycle on the reef. Storms, waves and currents naturally break apart corals 
and its branching corals break easier than boulder corals because their skeletons are less dense. This broken coral, however, is a good thing. It fills the gaps and crevices in the reef and helps build the overall reef structure that we see today. No matter what shape they are, all hard corals are structurally similar. They are colonies of individual animals called coral polyps. Coral polyps are related to jellyfish and actually look a bit like an upside down jellyfish. The size of the polyp depends on the type of coral. They can be smaller than a pinhead or larger than your fingernail. The coral colonies that we are looking at are made up of many polyps. Some large colonies are estimated to have over a million individual coral polyps. Hard corals play several very important roles on the reef. Firstly, they create the overall reef structure of the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef, in turn, is an important erosion barrier for the Queensland coast. It breaks up the force of oceanic waves and currents. Secondly, when corals die, they leave behind their limestone skeleton, which over time breaks down to form the beautiful white sand that you see here on the reef. In fact, broken pieces of coral, shells, and other marine life formed Green Island. Hard corals are not the only types of coral on the reef. There are also 150 different types of soft corals. Soft corals, as their name implies, do not have hard external skeletons like hard corals. Instead, they have thousands of tiny sharp pieces of limestone inside their soft tissue. These are called spicules. These spicules provide support to the soft tissue as well as fend off predators. Imagine trying to eat a soft coral would be like eating a spoonful of jelly with toothpicks in it. Soft corals also have very strong toxins or poisons in their tissue. The most commonly seen soft corals in this part of the reef are the elephant ear and spaghetti soft corals. Their names describe how they look. Elephant ear soft corals are large drab olive green. Spaghetti corals look like clusters of thick noodles waving in the current. Corals that are alive and healthy are usually beige or brown. It is rare to see corals that are bright blue or purple. The coral's brown color is actually the color of a single-celled plant called zooxanthellae. <laughs> Alrighty then, here on the, the right you have that soft coral waving in the motion of the ocean. Now, how come that we have so many coral varieties here on the Great Bay Reef? Um, coral needs two things to grow. One is sunlight, the other one is nice warm temperatures. We have them both here in Queensland. Now, why is coral so important for the fish? Fish can hide inside of the coral, especially when there's a big predator around. It can dart away inside of the coral. Also, fish will eat coral. Right? Away the coral. You're going to see lots of fish actually eating the coral. It's warm, isn't it? Now, very shortly, we're going to go over to an area where we're going to feed the fish. Fish feeding happens on the strict guidelines of the marine park. Uh, I'm not allowed to give whatever I want. See, this fish food is made out of the fish itself. It's only a certain amount that we give per day. Like this, at the end of the day, the fish go still looking for their natural food so they don't come completely dependent on us. Now all these fish are going to hang around a bomi. Now a bomi comes from an original word for bomi, and it means all the water structure that stands alone. And around that bomi, you'll see all the fish. Oh, I see that big valley. Well, come up from all directions here. They are on the left already. You have the bat fish. Okay. And it's a big flat fish. Oh, they're here on the right also. Looks like somebody selling in a squash fish. There is a bat fish. Now you have these blue ones with the yellow tail. They're called the yellow tail fuzzleers. And there's a couple of grey ones. And the black fish there, the big black one, his name is Gary. Gary the giant trevally. Uh, he's uh, one of our main predators around here, the trevally. Wow. Okay. Then you have silver fish also. They're a little bit deeper. They're all coming up now. Oh, here we go. They're all coming up. That's what we call the spangled emperor. The spangled emperor is a beautiful fish to eat, guys. 
Um, if you, you can find them in the fish and chip shops and also in the restaurants here in, here in Kiev. You know, they got all spooked by something. Yeah. The visibility is not fantastic today, that's why they're very nervous. They can't see that uh, shark coming towards them to eat them. By the way, can you tell uh, the difference between a happy shark and an angry, and an angry shark? You have to listen very carefully for, to tell the difference. The angry shark will sound like this on the water. Do, 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 do. Happy shark sounds like this. Do, 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 do. But those spangled emperors go as beautiful fish to eat. If you find them in the fish and chip shop, I can hardly recommend you. Or in the restaurant, they're called ray fish. Beautiful fish to eat. Now, if you have a good look in the eyes of the fish, you'll see that none of them can actually close their eyes. You see that? Now, maybe you wonder now, how do they sleep? Well, they sleep by shutting up a part of their brain. If wow, one sign has shut it. up, they wow. have to keep their eyes open to look for predators. Once one sign has rested enough, they'll do the same with the other side. Now, speaking of predators, we have sharks up here. Now, we don't have any dangerous sharks anymore here because they've been all scared away by the saltwater crocodiles. But the ones we do have up here is your white British shark, black British shark. They are most uh, common find around the reefs. They're more only active during the night. During the day, they're not so active at all. Um, they just patrol the reef or sleep. Now you don't have to be afraid of these sharks because the only thing they eat are the small colorful fish that actually can fit in their mouth. No, they do not eat people. Yeah. Unless you have uh, colorful toenails. No, that's not true. You see those black and white striped fish in between all of them? They're called zebra fish. They're actually one of the fi uh, fish that uh, destroyed the reef. Why do they do this? So there will be algae growing on that spot that they just have destroyed and as their food source. They will protect this with their life. Even if there's a shark coming too close to the algae, they will chase away the shark. Now it's a little fish with a big attitude. And on top also you have this uh, silver fish with the yellowish shine, not too big. They're called a rabbit fish. They're always in a pair. They find uh, their mate and they stay with their mate for life. This one here is a giant trevally, our one big predator around. He can go up to 100 k's in less than 3 seconds. It's faster than your average Formula 1 car, but he can't maintain that speed. It's only for a short time. Ooh. I'm going to have to go up for a second. I'll be back in a couple of seconds. Thank you. Gary, Gary. Uncle Gary. Uncle Gary. <laughs> He's a Trevally.